What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Evolution X-ROM based on Android 13. This is the January 19, 2023 build and if you want to flash this ROM, all the important links will be present in the description so you should not worry. We get the Evolution X logo up top still and the Android version is Android 13. The Evolution X version shows as 7.5 Menudo official build. The security patch is latest of January 5th, 2023. The stock kernel here is the Soviet star kernel and the build date here is again 19 January 2023 and the build maintainer is of course Johua. The SLX status shows as enforcing. In the system settings we have the system updater and you can check for updates if you want from here. You have this backup option and in the gestures we have this quick tap actions and stuff you can turn it on if you want and if you do the double tap as you can see it shows quick tap detected on the back side so you can customize it for taking screenshot or like for google assistant and stuff and the quickly open camera in the system navigation gesture settings we have the pill length pill radius customization and stuff then the back gesture animation swipe to invoke assistant everything is working perfectly fine here and we have the two button three button navigations and we have the one handed mode too that should work perfectly fine also we have this always on fingerprint this is the screen of everybody you can say and we have this power menu switching option to digital assistant then the swipe trick screenshot is also there and this feature is actually working perfectly fine we have the share edit delete and the google lens and even the capture mode feature is present in the pop-up camera settings we have these many sounds and you can disable the sounds if you want but as soon as i switch to the home screen you will see the best thing why this rom is so important for the redmi k20 pro in my opinion that is because this rom has the MIUI camera with the Leica camera feature and yes this is the Leica camera and it is working almost 99% I can say I have tested it thoroughly and yes you can see over on the top there is that Leica mode you can switch to the Leica vibrant or Leica authentic if you want and we have this HDR modes and stuff all these things are there and you get even more options if you switch to the normal like three bar options and here if you swipe up you will get even more options from the bottom and of course you can customize these things if you want there is also this multi-camera shooting option the ultra wide angle lens the normal 1x lens and the 2x telephoto lens everything is synced over here and you can shoot videos with two separate cameras obviously you can choose which ones you need so yeah this is great it actually shows 1x 0.6x 2x and the front camera so this is great that these options are present by default here i'll show you the samples but before that let me show you the settings so this camera is again present by default here so that's amazing earlier we used to not get the MIUI camera kind of things in android 13 but here you are getting this right out of the box and we have the watermark and stuff and we have this leica camera watermark if you want to enable those you can definitely do that and you can also enable the old device watermark and stuff and we have the smart session then the live tips and the quick staff mode then the correct distorted photos and we have the picture quality you can change it to high standard low everything and we have the volume button functions then we have this customization option and from here you can change this feature layout or you can do that swipe up or more panel from here or more tab whatever you want let me go back we have this shutter sound save location info etc and the pocket mode is also there then this preserve settings option is also there which settings do you actually want to preserve you can customize that from here let me go back we have this auto start and if you scroll down more we have even more some experimental features i can say we also have this pro mode with which you can actually shoot pro mode videos and you can control the white balance the focus shutter speed iso and even the lenses you can control from right here now let me show you there is the 4k 60 fps option for video shooting and even that is present in pro mode this is insane and of course in the video settings we can have this hevc or h.265 encoding so that is great we have this external mic option and stuff for the video wind filter option is there and we have this volume button function you can customize so all these things are present right out of the box here and even for normal videos yes the 0.66 or ultra wide angle lens it is working fine 1x lens is working of course fine and the 2x telephoto lens is of course working fine and the lens switching time just notice how fast it switches the lenses so yeah there is no black screen or something it just switches almost instantaneously so this is insane and here again not in the normal video settings we can shoot up to 4k 60 fps if you want to downgrade definitely you can go with 1080p 60 4k 30 etc options so all these things are present and even in the portrait mode i have taken portrait selfies and stuff let me actually show you with the front camera opened you can also shoot slow motion videos in 1080p 960 fps there is the vlog mode and stuff all these things are working fine but the one feature that i have seen that is not working is the documents mode i don't know why it's not working like i have tried to take pictures let me actually show you with this example and if i just capture it with the documents mode 
you will see it will capture but it won't show up over here it just goes away whenever you capture it as you can see it doesn't work even in the original mode if i capture it it doesn't work so yeah this is the picture i took earlier but yeah the documents mode is not working so this is a bummer in my opinion that why the documents mode is not working when everything else is working but yeah this is how it is the documents mode here is not working but except for that everything is working fine even the night side pictures the 48 megapixel mode everything is working fine let me just take a night side picture or night mode picture and this is the night mode picture it is a little bit hdr is even the 48 megapixel mode is working fine i have tested it let me show you the samples plants the colors everything is coming out to be really amazing in my opinion the greens and the whites and the pinkish colors everything is great in my opinion and this selfie i took with the portrait mode on and the quality of this is great of course it's taking 20 megapixel selfies so no issues whatsoever with the quality of it as you can see 20 megapixel here it shows i'll show you even more selfie samples this one i took again in like sunlight and it came out to be really really good and as you can see the background bokeh definitely looks amazing with the portrait mode you are getting back all the like amazing camera optimization of the redmi k20 pro and with the leica camera it is even better now this is a 48 megapixel mode photo if i zoom it in you will notice this but yeah this is a 48 megapixel photo which looks really really awesome in my opinion another 48 megapixel photo and if i zoom it in you will see much more details over here so yeah in terms of details there is no problems whatsoever and the normal photos which i took is about 12 megapixel of course and they definitely look colorful images are not too saturated the colors are well balanced in my opinion it definitely pops out you can share it on social media right away in my opinion the colors are really amazing yes the sharpness is not that much like in gcam but otherwise i would say very good quality photos or like color quality over here is amazing and i have to say i have always dreamt about having the redmi k20 pro with the android 13 rom with the miui camera working and this is insane that it is working and that is the sole reason i have inserted my sim card over here yes i have been really driving this device with my primary sim card and yes i can definitely recommend this rom as of right now to anyone evolution x is back at it again with a lot of customizations and stuff i will show you some glimpse of it but yeah And to the left of the home screen, we get the Google's Discover page and stuff and the scrolling and stuff is working perfectly fine. By the way, you can of course switch the refresh rate of the display to up to 102 hertz if you want. Let me actually switch to it. And with that, the 102 hertz and stuff, the colors, the white color actually shifts a little bit to the greenish side. In any display, if you overclock, the colors will shift towards yellowish or towards greenish. So here it tends to a little bit greenish that you can notice with your like normal eyes. You will get used to it if you keep using 100 hertz or 102 hertz. And all the animation and stuff, just notice how fluid it is. You are going home or you are opening a particular app. Everything is buttery smooth. Of course, this video I'm shooting at 50 FPS. So you cannot actually notice 102 FPS. But yeah, otherwise the animations I have been noticing is much, much fluid with 102 hertz, no issues whatsoever. And of course you are getting the EvoX launcher right out of the box. With that, you are getting all the customizations like the icon packs, notification dots, size and customization, the fonts and stuff. And we have this home screen customization where you get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen while we're scrolling and zooming. Then we have the status bar, top shadow, every customization that you will wish for. And in the app drawer, we have this enable app drawer search bar, themed icons, etc. In the recents, we have this scroll vibration, screenshot button, lens and clear all option. This is how the recents panel looks like, by the way, we have this lens and the clear all because I have enabled those two and you can adjust the background opacity as you like it. And yes, everything again is buttery smooth over here. No issues whatsoever. Now here, let me go back from here and the suggestions you can of course disable. And in the misc settings, we have this parallel space too. If you want to create two accounts of for your WhatsApp or something, you can definitely do that. We have this use taskbar, then the hidden and protect apps and you can restart the launcher from right here but let me show you the double tap to sleep or the fingerprint scanner speed over here you can say so if i just double tap on the blank area and shows you the ambient display or always on display and here you can customize the clocks i have did that and you can see the clock definitely looks awesome and even double tapping to wake is working perfectly fine and right now let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed if i tap the fingerprint scanner it unlocks perfectly fine let me show you one more time and yeah the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine you should not worry about it at all and here even with the always on display turned off let me show you this if i just put the device on my desk and just pick it up on my hand as you can see the pickup gesture is actually working fine here and even right now if i show you the face unlock 
I swipe up and as you can see it unlocks. Let me show you one more time. I have to double tap to wake the screen and then swipe up from the lock screen. And as you can see it has unlocked. So yeah, face unlock and stuff is working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever with that. And even if you want to see the screen of your body right now, the screen is off. So I'm just tapping the fingerprint scanner area and as you can see it has unlocked. Even the app lock is working fine. Sometimes it just goes away but yeah, you have to reopen it and if you tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see the app has unlocked. So yes, app lock, the face unlock, fingerprint scanner, everything is working fine here. The widgets are working fine again and we have this battery widget working great and you need the Pixel Buds app to actually get this battery widget I guess and here we have this phone's battery settings and you can tap here to get into the Bluetooth battery settings and the animations is again working perfectly fine. Just notice everything is just flying over here. Now in terms of the quick setting panel, yes, it stays like this. Even in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays dark. This is how it is. But the notification panel, of course, goes white in the light theme. And I have added these toggles. Let me actually show you from the last page. We have this refresher toggle, nearby share, heads up, anti-flicker, and the FPS info, then the ambient display, one-handed mode, airplane mode, and stuff. And of course, we have the reboot toggle right here. We have the sound toggle right here. Then we have the Google Home controls, battery saver, screen recording is also there. And we do have this HEVC recording still. And we have this device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time, the hotspot and stuff. Then we have this always on display toggling option. You can toggle it for charge. And it actually shows the Wi-Fi type. Right now it shows five. I don't know if you can notice that. But yeah, if you connect to five gigahertz Wi-Fi, it will show five. If you connect to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, it will show four over here. And you can turn that feature on or off from the customization section, of course. By the way, power menu appears like this, and we do have this advanced reboot enabled. So you can directly reboot to recover your fast boot from right here. And let me actually show you the volume panel. This is how it looks. You can expand the volume panel just like this if you want to switch the output device. And we have this normal expansion option. And you can put the phone into vibrant or silent from right here. And yes, it adapts to the Monet theme engine colors. This is how it looks like with my theme. And here, let me go into the settings. And over there, we have this Evolver settings on the top. And there, you will get all the customizations. By the way, we have this theming option and stuff. And I have been using it with the Vibrant option. And the color source, I have changed it to Home Wallpaper. And if you scroll down, we have this Luminance, Chroma Factor, Tint Background, etc. options. And in the dark theme, there is this custom dark theme option. You can enable it or change the colors of the background. Custom lock screen color option is there. And we have this lock screen clock font and plethora of fonts that you will get over here. These are pretty much amazing amount of options in my opinion. So you can customize between these kind of fonts however you like it. We have this headline body fonts and plethora of fonts again for the whole UI is there and the nothing dot font and stuff everything is there you should not worry about it. We have the icon pack changing option and the Wi-Fi icon signal icon styles etc. And we have the status bar, the notification, quick setting, every customization is still there. And in the miss settings, we of course get the unlimited Google photo storage, unlock higher FPS in games. And even we have this volume panel timeout, ignore window secure flags and the USB configuration, you can control it. And of course the Google service option is there for some reason, but I won't suggest going into it. We have this game space option too. You can add any other game that you are to use. And we have this launch music app, smart pixel, every option. In the animation, you can customize the animation of the UI. Then in the lock screen, we have this UDFPS customization. And from here, you can control the UDFPS icons, of course. Plethora of icons are there. And even we have this custom animations if you want to enable that. Now let's talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like. Now here, the battery settings is very minimal, I would say. It only shows the battery temperature on the bottom. I would have loved to see the battery charging cycles, but sadly, the battery charging cycle here, you cannot see. But we have this battery optimization, the charge warning and stuff. And we have this pixel battery usage chart and stuff. Now here, I have tested the battery life with the Aku battery app. And with that, you can see I have got about seven hours plus of screen on time. This is a brand new battery. And with that, you can see the health section. It shows as 96% battery health. That too, you have to remember with 102 hertz running all day long. So seven hours screen on time and standby time about four days. And the combined usage, it shows about 12 hours. And even the fast charging is working perfectly fine. You can see the stats from right here. In the sound and vibration settings, we have these kind of options and we have the Mi Audio Dirac and this actually shows a new logo you can see and in the Mi Audio Dirac, it looks much more beautiful right now and from the choose headphone type, you can actually choose between these many headphones. Plethora of options are there even for Bluetooth headphones and stuff but I have been using it with the youth edition. The sound quality with that is great. Even the presets you can choose, the bass booster and stuff. And the smart scene option is there. And if you scroll down, we get this hi-fi audio option. The most important change here, I, I would say, yes, this beautiful looking Didac logo, which was not there earlier. And again, the sound quality with the headphone jack, the Bluetooth, normal speaker, the earpiece, everything has been great.
we also have this haptic feedback or intensity customization for the vibration and we have this clear speaker option too if you want to use that and you can control these kind of sounds in the display settings we have this lock screen option and in here you can go into the advanced settings and from here you can actually choose the pickup option to like pulse notification on pickup or wake device on pickup so these things you can customize and we have this use ambient display option or you can go with the hand wave pocket mode and always on display from here and we have this always on fingerprint again and we have this wake screen for notification you can disable it if you want pocket addiction the dark theme and the display size and text let me scroll down we have this live display and from here you get the anti flicker then if you go here we have this outdoor bright sun mode so if you want to turn the super bright mode of the display you can definitely do that in the color calibration we have this rgb control of the screen and here we have this minimum and maximum refresh rate you can of course switch between these many options from 60 hertz to 102 hertz options are there but let me tell you if you have replaced your display or if you have broken your display and got a new display from the service center I won't suggest switching the display refresh at anything above 60 hertz but otherwise if it's your stock display you can definitely use more than 60 hertz i have been using it with 102 hertz no issues whatsoever and we have the slow power refresh rate. you can switch that if you want now the screen protector mode it will actually increase the sensitivity of the screen here we have this double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up and the wake up on plug you can disable and per app refresh rate you can actually customize between 60 hertz or 90 hertz now in the security of course we have this quick unlock and i have already showed you the fingerprint scanner speed and stuff now let's talk about the basic things if you can use banking apps right out of the box on this rom the answer is yes i have been using banking apps no issues whatsoever but let me tell you if you're using sbi card app make sure you delete the orange fox or fox folder from the internal storage that should work perfectly fine the drm info shows as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p so what do i think about the latest build of the evolution x rom based on android 13 which comes with the anx camera or mui camera with leica features and stuff you can say so what do I think about this? Well, the performance of this ROM is amazing. No issues whatsoever that I have faced in terms of performance. Everything is buttery smooth. But one bug that I have to mention is that if you're using any app which supports that PIP kind of feature, it will get stuck in the screen like the PIP display, the pop-up window will be stuck in the screen for some time. So you have to reboot the device to actually fix that bug and you have to turn off the PIP mode or display over the apps kind of feature. You have to actually disable that afterwards it will be fine. So this is one bug that I've noticed and MIUI camera has that documents mode bug. Except for these two, I haven't noticed any other bugs whatsoever. The whole device performance is just flying through it. It's just amazing. And you can see the performance benchmarks from the screen, the Android score, the Geekbench score and with the CPU stress test of this build, you can guess about the whole device performance. Yes, switching from the redmi note 10 pro that i daily drive usually this is a much much better and fast experience in my opinion even for gaming and stuff it should be even better the redmi k20 pro has the snapdragon 855 and that is getting utilized with this particular rom amazingly well let me know in the comments what do you guys think share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest evolution x rom which comes with the miui camera right out of the box with android 13 and stuff and all the customizations how do you like it and give this video a thumbs up if you actually liked it and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.